before we get into the video, I just want to say a quick story because I did something pretty shameful. And what I did is I got my coordinates mixed up. Uh, whenever I refer to north, I actually mean west. And whenever I refer to south, I actually mean east. Basically, I got my X and Z directions mixed up. So that's pretty bad. But the good news is that it didn't actually make any difference because north is equivalent to west for all of the mechanics I talk about and south is equivalent to east for all the mechanics I talk about. So hurrah! Hi there, I'm Ekfer, and today I want to do a video uh, which is going to cover some mechanics. And the mechanics I'm going to talk about today are all about villagers and particularly the size of a village. So there's been a bit of an interesting debate going on in the technical community about exactly how big a village is. And, um, well, I feel a little bit guilty because I think I started it. And it actually started quite a long time ago. I was doing some testing and I think it was around iron farms. And I discovered something and I went and updated the wiki because of that. Because the wiki said that a village was 64 by 24 by 64 blocks. And yep, it was me. I changed it to 65 by 25 by 65. And let me explain why I did that. And I'm not going to be talking about this kind of village because honestly, I've got no idea how big this village is. No, I'm going to be talking about this kind of village. And this is actually isn't a village yet because I've got a bed. But to make a village, I need one bed and one villager, but not him. He'll do. And so I've now made a village and I've marked out a boundary around this village. And you can see the yellow wall forms a 64 by 64 space that's centered on the pillar of that bed. And the blue wall forms a 65 by 65 space. And if you want to look at uh, which direction that's in, remember the center pumpkin points northwest. So we've got an extra block on the south and the east side. And the question is, is the village as big as the yellow wool, or does it go out as far as the blue wool? If you happen to follow the YouTube channels of Ruth Saticus or Old Guy, then you might know that they've done videos on a similar topic recently. And I'll link those down in the description. And by the way, if you don't watch them, I recommend you start because they're really good. Um, but what was really interesting about it is they came to a different conclusion. And what I want to do today is go into that in a bit more detail and look at the different mechanics and explain A, why they came to a different conclusion and B, also give you guys the understanding you need when you're working with villagers within your Minecraft worlds. Okay, so let's dive straight in. I'll talk in a bit more detail about my testing approach and how I did it. But essentially, a lot of it is based on uh, this tool here, here, which is called Universal Minecraft Editor. And it allows me to see the NBT data, particularly of a village. So here is my world, which we've just been looking at. How big is a village? I'm going to open it up. And I can go into the files down here. And I will find in there that I have here these four lines which represent a village. And if I double click on the info one, I can see that my village, I don't know if that's big enough for you guys to see, uh, goes from X0 to X64 and from Z0 to Z64. And I looked at that and I thought, oh, block zero to block 64, that's 65 blocks. But I realized it could be coordinates because from coordinate 0.0, .0 to coordinate 64.0, is actually only 64 blocks. So there we go. And I thought, well, actually, I still don't know the answer. Let's go and do some testing. So in I went to Minecraft and created a village that I've just done. Got a villager, he's got a bed, I could give him a workstation as well, connected to that. And let's go and put another villager over here. And I'm going to put his POI right on the border here. Okay. Uh, not you, you. And so now this villager is connected to POI, which is right on our 64 by 64 border. And I'll go over the other side. And this time I'm going to put a villager with a POI workstation 
on the 65 by 65 border. And if a village is 64 by 64, then obviously I'm now putting a workstation outside the village. I'm connecting a villager to it. And therefore, I must have stretched the village. Let's go and have a look in Universal Minecraft Editor. Okay, so here's my world again. Let's open it up. And we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to the View Files, Database, click V for Village, and go into the Info. And yeah, so X0 is still 0, X1 is still 64, Z0 is still 0, and Z1 is 64. So the village size hasn't changed. I've now got two workstations, one on block zero, one on block 64. That's a total of 65 blocks, right? And the village size hasn't changed. Therefore, I said to myself, the village is 65 by 65. Obvious. And I did the same with the, the vertical um, axis as well and worked out that was 25. Okay, so that's the reason I did the change. So if that's all I will say about uh, the village size, and maybe the answer is kind of obvious, uh, but it's not. And of course, there are two big approaches to how we look at village size with the game. Um, so how can we tell how big that village is? And the first is around the game mechanics and looking at what happens within the game to try and determine the village size. And the second one is around code digging. So we actually look at the code and we work out from the code itself how big the village is. And those are two different approaches. They've both got their merits. Personally, I prefer the game mechanics because at the end of the day, we're, we're playing the game, right? So if things are expressed through the mechanics of the game, that's actually what's important to us. But sometimes you can't always really tell what's going on uh, just from playing. And looking at the code and really working out what the code is saying helps us to understand those game mechanics and it can fill in some gaps for us. And everything I know about the code I've got from Rufus. So big shout out to Rufus Atticus. Thank you very much for your explanations on this stuff, which have been like massively useful to me. Okay, so how do you define a village using the mechanics? And I've got a list of things. I hope I've got all of them. If you think I've missed something, let me know in the comments. But the first one is POI placement. So that's one we've just looked at. You know, if I place a POI, a bed, a bell, or a, a workstation, I'm either placing it within the village or outside the village. And that will either cause the village to extend or not, depending. The next one is raid activation. And the idea here is that a player who has bad omen will trigger a raid when they enter the village. Right. So the point at which that raid is triggered is an indicator of when the player has entered the village. And therefore, we can tell the size of the village from that. The third one is the village activation range. And this is about how far away from a village you need to be in order to make certain things happen. And uh, you, you can tick a village. And what I mean by ticking the village is that certain things will happen like golems will spawn, cats will spawn, villagers will restock and work, etc. There's the village merge range. This is related to POI placement. And what I mean by that is if I place a POI outside a village and I link a villager to it, one of two things can happen. The first is, that the village expands to encompass that POI. And the second thing is I create a new village. And the difference between those depends on how far away from the village I've placed that POI. So again, that gives an indicator of the size of the village. Next is TS timer activation. People are probably less familiar with this, but village dwellers, which are cat, golems, and villagers, have this thing which is called a TS timer. And that will increment, it'll update along the game time. And when they're in the village, it'll carry on updating. And if they leave the village and they go far enough away from the village, it'll stop. And so the distance at which it stops gives us an idea, therefore, of how big the village is. And the last one is around cats and golems spawning range. And it doesn't really tell us the size of the village as such. It tells us where the center is, but we can use that certainly to determine the, the shape of the village. And I've split them into three groups, as you can see. The first one is uh, tells us directly the size of the village based on the game mechanics. The next three are relative to the edge of the village, and it's relative to the edge, not the centre. I've done some testing to make sure. So those all tell us how far away we are from the edge of the village, and again, that, that tells us the size. And the third one is relative to the centre, which tells us the shape of the village. 
uh, not the size directly. And we're going to look at all of those mechanics. We're going to say, does this mechanic imply that the village is 64 by 64, which also means 24 high, or 65 by 65, which also means 25 high? Well, we've already done one of them. We've done this top one, and we've seen that we can place a POI within a 65 by 25 by 65 area, and that doesn't extend the village. If we consider the village to be 64 by 64, then we can place that POI one block outside the village to the south or the east or the top of the AABB. And I need to tell you what the AABB is. So what is that? First, my little tick in the 65 by 65, that's kind of pointing to that being the size. But let's talk about the AABB. This is a, a construct within the, the game code. And it's the construct which defines the village. Okay. And it stands for axis aligned bounding box, which just basically means it's a, a box, it's a cuboid. And so therefore it's axis aligned, the edges of the box are aligned with the X, Y, Z axes. And it is 64 by 64 by 24. There's no arguing with that. That's what it says in the code. It's really clear. And let's take our, our village in our world. The axis aligned bounding box of that village goes from 0.0, .0 coordinate 0.0, .0 to coordinate 64.0. That is 64 blocks, okay? Uh, it's not block zero to block 64, which would be 65, it's 0, .0 to 64.0. And that's kind of important because it helps to explain why the code seems to be saying one thing and what we see within the game itself is something else. Let's go back into the game and have a look. Okay, so I'm on the north side of my village now and we've got our little villager here with his POI, his workstation, dutifully working away, actually staring me at the, at the moment. And um, let's see where coordinate 0.0, .0 is. So I'm going to TP myself to 0.0, .0 at my current coordinates, and we end up here. Okay, what block is that on? Well, if you look at my, um, let's do it again. If you look at my coordinates at the top left of the screen, you can see position 0. That is the yellow wall block here. If I went one further out, I'd be at minus one. So 0, 0.0, .0 is on this yellow wall block. Let's TP ourselves to 64.0. And let's see where that is. Okay, so it's on that border, but you can see that actually that is on the blue wall. So our workstation here is actually this very edge along here is actually inside the bounding box. And what Ruth has explained to me is that that's why the game determines that this POI doesn't need stretch village because it's overlapping the bounding box of village because that coordinate goes up to 64.0, which is effectively on the blue wall block, which is where the POI is. Okay, so that's the reason why. So coming back to a presentation, um, this edge here is within the ABB, and therefore the game counts this workstation as being within that 64 by 64 range, even though it's on the 65th block. So that's just explaining, hopefully, why this happens from a code perspective. From a mechanics perspective, I'm still going with 65 by 65. Um, and also, if we extend the village down the other way, uh, to this block, which is at block minus one, then that is not within the bounding box. There is no overlap there because this doesn't start at 0, .0. 0, .0, 0 is the next block along, and therefore that doesn't extend. Uh, so that does extend the village if I place a block down here. Right. Next, let's go and have a look at raid activation. So I'm back at the north edge of my village here. And I'm going to give myself bad omen. By the way, I'm on peaceful mode. I've got mob spawning turned off. This will not start a raid. So what we're looking at is at what point bad omen gets taken away from the player. So let's start off by giving myself bad omen. Doing effect egg for bad omen. Uh, 99 seconds will do. And we'll use true to turn off particles. And you can see in the right hand side there, I've now got the bad omen effect. So let's go across towards the edge of our village and we'll see at what point that bad omen goes away. And there it is. As soon as I cross onto that yellow um, wool, 
then the bad omen is taken away. Okay, let's do the same thing on the other side. And the question here is, would it happen on the yellow wool again or on the blue wool? So I'll give myself bad omen. You can see it on the right hand side there. And let's approach the blue line and see what happens when I cross that. And there we go. Bad omen has been taken away. So the game considers me to be in the village as soon as I get onto this blue wall on the 65 by 65 range. So for most things, I'm ignoring the vertical height because I'm assuming that uh, the, the vertical height is the same as you know the um, horizontal. So it's 65 by 24 by 65 or it's 64 by 24 by 64. Uh, raid activation is an interesting one because it's a little bit different and it's important to understand that, especially designing a raid farm, for example, that could become important. So again, I've got a, uh, a yellow block and a blue block. The yellow block is the edge of the 24 block range and the blue block is the 25 block range. So uh, what we want to do is we want to see at what point I activate a raid. And we're going to do that by being able to see myself. And I'm going to give myself bad omen again. I'm going to wander over this way, which is into a village, and I'm going to go down. So when I enter that blue block, it does nothing. And let's go into the yellow block with my feet. That does nothing. And the reason is that raid activation is based on the height of the player's eyes. So let's keep going down and see when our eyes cross into the blue block, suddenly bad omen has gone away and the raid would have been activated. And you can see there, I'm not at the bottom of the yellow block. It's not that I've entered a new block below. It's because my eyes have gone into that 65 by 25 by 65 area. Okay, so we've just seen that a player is considered to be inside the village and activates raid if they're in that 65 by 25 by 65 area. And if you consider the village to be represented by the uh, 64 by 24 by 64, AABB, then they trigger the raid one extra block to the south, east, and top of the ABB. So again, this kind of implies that we're talking about 65 by 65. So let's quickly talk about the code again and why this happens. And once more, this is from uh, information that Rufus has given me. So let's imagine we have our access line bounding box it goes from zero to 64 coordinates, and we have one block outside that, so obviously not to scale, okay? And our player is standing on that block at, say, x coordinate 64.5. Now, what the game does when it's checking whether that player is inside the bounding box or not is it rounds down the player's coordinates. So it just takes the 64 bit. And we know that 64.0 is within the AABB. And that's why, from a code perspective, uh, why when the player is on the 65th block, they're counted as being within the axis line bounding box of the village, the internal structure. Okay, let's move on to the village activation range. So this is my village and I'm, I don't know how big it is yet. So we're going to imagine it could be 64 by 64 or 65 by 65, but there is a well-known formula for the distance where you have to be to activate that village. And that is eight times the sim distance from the village edge. So by using that, we can work out where the village edge is. And it obviously then varies based on sim distance. Uh, I'm not going to read those out to you, but the one we care about is sim 4. And I'm going to stand 32 blocks away from where I think the edge of the village is. And we're going to prove um, that that's correct or not. And indeed find out from that where the game considers the village edge to be for activation. I've turned my village into an iron farm. It's not a very good iron farm, don't copy this, but it is an iron farm. It will generate golems. Um, the village will also generate cats. And I've got a couple of command blocks down here. And one of them will teleport cats to two blocks above the command block. And one of them will teleport iron golems. And we're doing that just because it makes sure that we can see them when they generate. And I'm on block minus 33 here, and block minus 33 is 33 blocks away from the edge of the village. And whether that village is 64 by 64 or 65 by 65 is the same on this side, which is the north side. Okay, 
and also on the west side. So what should happen is whilst I'm on this black block here, I don't get anything. If I move forwards and uh, both my 64 range and my 65 range agree, if I move onto those blocks there at minus 32, then I should start getting things spawning in the village because it's activated and we just saw a cat and we've just seen a golem. Okay, so I know I didn't spend a huge amount of time on the black blocks because from a video perspective, it's not very interesting watching nothing happen. Trust me that nothing does happen however long you wait at those. Okay, what's more interesting is over the other side of the village. And if we come over here, now there's a disagreement because if my village is 65 by 65, then block 96 is going to be the one that's 32 from the edge. And if my village is 64 by 64, it's going to be block 95, which is 32 blocks from the edge. And what I can tell you is I can stand here for as long as I want and nothing will happen. If I move on to the yellow block and I wait a few moments, you see I start to get spawned and I got a cat and then I got them pretty much straight away. So if you remember these blocks we used for raid activation, uh, the yellow one is block 12, uh, which is implies a 24 high village. And the blue one is block 13, which implies a 25 high village. And block 12 is at minus 49. You can see the middle corner to the top left. And block 13 is at minus 48. That's based on where my feet are. Okay. Now, what's interesting is if I now go up 32 blocks, then 32 blocks above the 24 high village is this one. And above the 25 high village is this one. Okay, let's get rid of these guys for now. Now, the question is, where is it measured from? So in theory, if I'm here, I'm kind of level with my feet on level with the blue block, then nothing will happen. Because we know that it's really based on the... 64 by 64 by 24 village. What about my feet are level with the yellow block, like here? Well, actually, nothing happens there either. And the place it happens is when my eye level is level with that yellow block. And as soon as I move there, you see we got a cat spawning and coming up to the command block. So again, this height is measured from the player's eye level. So what's that mean? So let's summarize it again. The village is activated when the player is within eight times sim distance of the edge of the AABV, which is that 64 by 24 by 64 um, village. So eight times sim distance on sim four is 32 blocks. And if you look at the vertical distance, it uses eye level as the measure. So that's pointing to a 64 by 24 by 64 village. Let's go quickly look at merge range. I'm back in Universal Minecraft Editor just to show you our starting position. I'm using the Magnifier app in Windows, so hopefully it's easier to see this time. Um, and we've got these four lines which represent a village. And you'll see that there is only one village here. And that village goes from 0 to 64 on the x-axis and 0 to 64 on the z-axis. Let's go back again. So again, I'm starting on the north side of the village because on the north and west side, our two ranges agree with where the edge is, which is here. And I'm going to come out by 65 blocks. And the reason I'm coming out by 65 blocks is that if I place a, a linked POI on the 65th block away from the village edge, then that should create a new village. And if I place it on the 64th block away from the village edge, then that should merge into the current village. So we're going to prove that. By the way, I've broken the extra beds for the iron farm. So um, there's one bed per villager now. And we're going to place an extra one just here. And pop a villager into there. He should hopefully connect to that bed. Give him a second. There we go. And we're going to go back into Universal Minecraft Editor and see what's happened. So going to my village, view files, database, down to the villagers. 
and you can see that I've created two villages now. If I click on info here, this is my first one, which goes from 97 to minus 33. So that's actually a new one. And Z minus 2 to minus 62. And if I click on this one, then you can see it goes from X0 to 64 and Z0 to 64. So that's our original village. But we have created a new village as we expected. Okay, so let's destroy that village. I'm going to kill a villager and break the bed. I'm going to place a new bed just here. And we're now going to link a villager to that instead. It's not you. You'll do. There we go. And he linked straight away to the bed. And we'll flip back to UME and see what's happened. Opening up the same world. And we go up here. View files, database, villagers. And let's look down this list and you can see I've now only got one village. Let's see how big it is. That village now goes from minus 64 to 64 and from 0 to 64 on the z-axis. So we have indeed expanded it on the x-axis. It's now double the size. I've done two things. I've come to the south side of the village, but I've also recreated the village just to reset it to our, our default size. So uh, the centre is back where it was before, and these are our proposed edges with 64 by 64 or 65 by 65. And then I've come out over here, and this yellow block is 65 blocks from the edge of the yellow wall over there. And this is the 65th block from the edge of the blue wall. So in theory, if the blue wall is our correct edge and I place a bed here and link a villager to it then it creates a new village and if I place it here if the blue block is the edge of our village then this will merge but if the yellow block is the edge of our village it won't okay and either way if I place a bed here Either of them should merge. So just to keep the video a little bit shorter, I'm going to place a bed here and link a villager to it, and we'll see what happens. So remember, if this creates a new village, yellow is the correct edge. If it merges, blue is the correct edge. Right, Aww. pop a villager in there. Let's see if he links. Do you have noticed actually is that um, they don't link if they're outside that range, the villagers either. So let me kill him and pop him just here. And then he's going to link straight away. So go to that. Okay, so let's go and see if we have created a new village or not. Back into the world and back to our villagers in the database. Uh, oops, where has it gone to there? And you can see we only have one village here. And if we look at the size of that, we can see indeed that village goes from 0 to 1 to 8 uh, on the x-axis and 0 to 64 on the z-axis. That means we have expanded the village. And do you remember what that says? If we've expanded the village, that means that the blue edge is the correct one that we're measuring from in terms of village merging. So let's just summarize. What we've seen is that you can avoid two villages merging by placing all the POI for a second village at least on a 65th block away from the edge of the first village. But in order to do that, you've got to assume your first village is 65 by 65, not 64 by 64. So that indicates that we need to put a tick in that 65 by 65 column. Now, I've not spoken to Rupus specifically about this one. I'm guessing the reason why internally is exactly the same as the reason for the uh, POI placement we did first, that um, there's an overlap with the range that the game looks in. So just that line that overlaps where the POI is. Right, let's go look at TS timer activation. And I'm going to shortcut this a little bit because the video is already getting very long. Uh, to answer the question how big is a village and watching the testing is a bit tedious as well. So here's our village. We don't know how big it is yet. We're going to test that. But we do know that if a, 
a dweller is within 10 blocks, less than equal 10 blocks from the village edge, then its TS time will run. And what I mean by that is it gets updated with the current game time that happens every 15 game ticks. Thank you, Rufus. However, if the dweller is more than 10 blocks from village edge, then the TS timer stops. Okay, and we're going to show that and we're going to find out where that happens. So we'll place our iron golem greater than 10 blocks from where we think the village edge is and see if the timer stops and which edge it does it at. Um, it's a little bit more complicated than that. So this is one of the reasons why villager breeders might stop working because you make babies, uh, they'll use a bed in a breeder, you move them away somewhere else and you think, okay, they will have left the village now. The breeder should be able to make more babies. But the actual fact that TS timer is running and it's only when that TS timer has expired and the baby's removed from the village that that bed is freed up and you can make a new baby. And that happens after 20 minutes. So if the TS timer is 20 minutes old, then the game will look at that and it will say, if the baby is within 10 blocks, between 10 blocks, 48 blocks from the village edge, the timer just gets reset to, to the current game time. Nothing happens. And that baby will, or golem, will never leave the village. It's only if we get 20 minutes and the dweller, the baby or the golem or whoever it is, is more than 48 blocks away from the village edge, that it's then removed from the village. Okay, so if you had a breeder which doesn't move babies to a new village, then uh, you can move them as far away as you want. They'll take 20 minutes to remove them from the village. If you don't move them at least 48 blocks away, they'll never leave the village. Let's go back in game. Okay, so this is my test setup. I've got my Iron Golem, who spawned my farm over there. I've got Command Block, which is moving him to block 74, which is 10 blocks from this edge here. So this line is 74, and this line is 10 blocks away from there. That's not greater than 10 blocks, and therefore, we should expect his TS timer to carry on updating. And we're going to switch into UME and we'll have a look at that. Right, here's UME and I've gone to the dweller section of the village and my top set of dwellers are my villagers, 10 of those. The next one down is Iron Golems. And if I click through here, I can see this entry says TS and it's currently set to 179, 1236. And if we go back into the game and come back out to UME, that should have updated. Okay, so I'm going to do that and we'll come back and have a look. Okay, we're back at our village and if I open now the Iron Golem entry, I can see that this has gone up to 1791814. Okay, so I want to show you my test methodology and give you the tools to be able to reproduce it yourself. Um, what I do next is I then go and move the Golem out, not by much. I move it to 74.01, like so. It's moved on a little bit. If I now exit the game, I go and look in UME. I see the TS timer. I go back into the game. I wait for just a, a couple of seconds. I come back out, go back into UME. What I'll see is the TS timer hasn't changed in between those two times going to the game. It's not really an interesting thing to show you on the video, so I'm not going to. But take my word for it that at 75.01, the TS timer will stop updating. And that is 10 blocks from the edge of the yellow line here. So what's that tell us? Well, what it tells us is that the TS timer will stop when a village dweller is more than 10 blocks from the edge of the AABB, which is the 64 by 64 village range. So we put a tick in that box. And you can see already that this is getting to be quite a confusing um, set of tests because we're getting different tests showing us different things. Okay, let's go and look at the last one anyway, which is the Golem and Cat spawning range. Okay, so here's my iron farm, and it's a bit of a weird iron farm because I've got a, a, a platform which only has a row of blocks at the north edge and another row of blocks at the south edge over there. And those blocks are at position 1 and position 17. And that's quite interesting because the Golem and Cat spawning range always used to be 16 by 16, but it's evidence it's grown now to 17 by 17. And I want to 
do two things. I want to validate that. And I want to see whether the center of the village or the center of the cat and golem spawning range is actually aligned with my blue outline, 65 by 65, or my yellow outline, which is 64 by 64. And the difference is, because this pillow is the center, if it was 65 by 65, the middle of the pillow would be the center of the village. And if it's 64 by 64, then the northwest corner, just here, would be the center of the village. So I've represented that with these arrows. So this arrow here is in the middle of a block, 65 by 65. This one is on the edge of a block, 64 by 64. And you can see we are getting um, cats spawning over there. I haven't got anything spawning here yet, but I'm sure that they will appear in good time. Oh, there we go, got a golem. So it does seem like it's a 17 by 17 range, but actually that could even happen if it was 16 by 16 because we've talked about the fact that the edge of the ABB could be included within a range and therefore you might get extra block. Same as our, our village is 65 by 65, yeah? So what we could do is a specific test where we extend the village by one block to the north. And when we do that, the village center will shift by half a block to the north. So if it was here, in the middle it'll go to this line here and if it was on this line already it'll go to the middle here and what i can tell you is that if our spawning range is let's say 17 by 17 and we shift the center here and i count then eight and a half blocks that's my half up to the middle of there then one two three four five six seven would get me to the middle of block zero so this is block one, this will be block zero. It'll get me to here, but that doesn't include the northwest corner of these blocks. And therefore I don't expect to get any golems or um, cats spawning on this row. If on the other hand, the center started here and it was 17 by 17, then I count eight and a half blocks from there. That takes me to, uh, sorry, and I shift it over to there. So now I count eight and a half blocks from here that takes me to here, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight would take me to the edge of this one. And I would get cats, cats and golems spawning on this row. And that is the only situation where shifting the village will get me cats and golems on this row here. Let's go do some testing then. So let's extend the village by one block to the north this guy to this workstation which is outside the village edge and we're going to go to these guys for now get rid of all of these blocks and we're going to replace that with a row of blocks along here and if anything spawns on this row of blocks now then our village center must have started off here and the spawning range must be 17 by 17. So let's just give that a moment and see what happens. And there we go. We've got a golem here. So that's pretty conclusive. The golem spawning range center certainly is aligned with the northwest corner of the center block. And the spawning range is 17 by 17. Let's go and plug that into our results. So what that has told us is that Gollum and Cat spawn on any block which has its northwest corner in a 17 by 17 range around the center of the ABB. So the center of Cat and Gollum spawning is actually the center of a 64 by 64 village. So is that the village center? Well, yeah, it, it, it should be, right? So we need to put a tick in this box. Interesting. Let's uh, try and summarize what we see here. Well, clearly we've got three ticks in each side. So 64 by 64, 65 by 65. And that makes it really apparent that there's no one good answer to the question of how big a village is. But maybe we can look a little bit about which things are important, okay? So first of all, if you're building a raid farm, then 
obviously the size of the village could be important. In most red farms it's not, but there are some where the player has to leave the village and come back in order to make it work. So that could be important. The second one is village merge range, because if you are trying to decide how far away to build uh, a farm from, say, an existing village or another farm, then you need to know um, how to avoid your villages merging. And it also, if you're transporting villages, maybe you want to avoid them uh, becoming a member of a village that's part of the existing farm. So that's important. The third one, obviously, is the cat and garden spawning range, because that's really, really important for iron farms. Now, although we've got a tick in the 64 by 64 box, in reality, if you have a farm which where you haven't extended the village, then it makes no difference at all. If a village was 65 by 65 or 64 by 64, you get exactly the same spawning range for those two. So I'm putting an honorary little tick in the 65 by 65 here. But because um, actually, you know, when you build an iron farm, one of the things we really try and do is not to extend the village because we want to control exactly where the center is and the golem spawning range. And speaking of not extending the village, that means that the POI placement range could become important as well, because we know where we can place our POI to ensure that we don't extend the village. The last one is village activation range. And that's important if you've got multiple farms, you want AFK somewhere where you're activating all of them, then the village activation range could become important for that. Uh, so in reality, out of all of those, there's only one which fits in a 64 by 64 village column. And that's the only one we need to worry about and, and pay special attention to maybe. Yes, timer activation. Actually, I can't think of a mechanic where um, you would really want to use this. If you're, if you're relying on TS timer activation, I suspect you're doing something wrong. Uh, you know, put it in the comments. You've got some great ideas on how to use this in a, in a good way. But I can't think of one. So actually, my conclusion, and, and everyone's conclusion might be different. I don't really care. Uh, but my conclusion is that the best thing to do is think about the village as being 65 by 65 because in terms of game mechanics, that's the answer which makes the most sense and which is going to actually be important for you in building your farms. However, just be really careful about the village activation range because that is different. And, you know, people, like I said, people have different views on this and I don't think it really matters. I think what's important really is that you understand the differences between the AABB and the effective village size 65 by 65 in many cases. And if you understand those things, then that's great. And hopefully this video has helped you to do that. Okay, so if you made it this far and you've enjoyed the video, then um, that's great. If on your hand you just think you've wasted 45 minutes of your life, then I can only apologize. But either way, please think about subscribing to the channel and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye now.